Today with Joseph Prince. The law focuses on you. You shall not, you shall not, you shall not. Grace focuses on God. I will, I will, I will be merciful with your sins and your sins and iniquities will I remember, will I remember no more. It's all about God and His supply. Good morning, good morning, Lakewood. Praise the Lord, God is good, amen. You may be seated, thank you so much. Uh, I was with your pastor just last week in New York, filming in TBN. I had a great time with him, and every time I'm with him, I'm lifted, just being in his presence. I don't know how many of you have the privilege of really spending some time with him, but he's still the same for all these years. Like Jesus, huh? Yesterday, today, and forever. Humble, you know, and I got to strain to hear what he's got to tell me. And there's nobody in the room. <laughs> but we are gathered in the name of Jesus. And he is here. And he's not here to be a spectator. He's here to meet your needs. Yeah. Amen. He loves to be a servant. You know, uh, right after the Ten Commandments was given in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, God lists down for the first time the Ten Commandments. You know what comes immediately after in the next chapter? Chapter 21. God says, now these are the statutes that you must keep. And the very first thing God talks about is about a Hebrew servant. If a Hebrew servant has served his master, for seven years, for six years. In the seventh year, he can go free. But if he has received his wife and his family during his servitude, and he loves his master, he loves his wife, he doesn't want to go out free because they'll, they'll be left behind, then he can say, I want to remain as a born servant. And the master will pierce his ear. Why did God put this very first thing right after he talks about the Ten Commandments? God gave us this statute in the very next chapter. God had in mind his son, his beloved son, the lovely, all beautiful one, our Lord Jesus Christ. That he will come as a man. And you know there's a scripture, a messianic psalm that says, in the Septuagint, it says, my year has thou digged. In our King James, it says, a body has thou prepared me. So he became that servant. Do you know that he said, he said this, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. Amen. And whenever he found someone who would allow him to serve, all the grace and the goodness of his heart comes flowing out. But every time someone tries to serve him, now hear me out, we serve because we have been served. Do you know that even in glory today, right now at the Father's right hand, He is here with his, by His Holy Spirit, and His presence is here. He says, where two or three, the smallest plurality, two, there am I in the midst of them. God in all His glory is there. So even though bodily He's in heaven, glorified, John saw Him in the book of Revelation, and He was girded with a golden girdle. That's the gap of a servant, people. So even in heaven, He serves us still. Now you might be uh, held back in your, by your religious spirit by that very thought of the Lord serving you. Remember Peter, when the Lord washed the disciples' feet? And he said, Lord, you cannot wash my feet. He says, if I don't wash you, you have no part with me. He didn't say in me, Peter was in him, but no part with me. You cannot flow with me if you don't allow me to serve you. Pain, a negative doctor's report, anxieties, and even depression. You or someone you love may be facing one of these common enemies right now. But here's wonderful news. Healing doesn't have to be hard. Pastor Prince reveals in his breakthrough book, Eating Your Way to Wholeness, a practical guide to the Holy Communion. That is why I want to send you this easy to read resource completely free. 
Click right now to request your free copy of Pastor Prince's Eating Your Way to Wholeness, a practical guide to the Holy Communion. Once he came into the house of two sisters, the brother Lazarus, Mary and Martha, and the Bible says Martha was busy, cumbered about serving in the kitchen, preparing food, but her sister Mary sat at Jesus' feet. And then after for a while, Martha came out, you know, with that tone of voice. <laughs> and she was angry, she was stressed because she has not read Live the Let Go Life. <laughs> and she blamed two persons at one time. Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me alone to serve? Remember that? She forgot that this one that is in her house, took five loaves and two fish, and he multiplied it to feed more than 5,000. There were 5,000 men counted, but women and children, probably 10,000. She forgot who he was. And when he comes to your house, you know, the polite, the Eastern culture, like even in Singapore, when someone comes to your house, you served. And God is not against you serving, but her spirit was like this. Jesus looked at her and says, Martha, Martha, you are careful and troubled about many things. It is not the service, it is the heart. If you are stressed out and you are troubled and you are worried inside, it's because you have not been fed, you have not been served. Sit at his feet, let him serve to you. Martha, you are troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. Do you really believe that? Of all the things that we have to do in our lives, I mean, every day, uh, parenting, you know, uh, uh, datelines to meet, and uh, making sure that we are keeping up with new knowledge in our workplace, or else be redeployed or retrained. With all these things, all the demands on us, we only have that much time in a day. Do we really believe that one thing is needful? And Mary chose that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Now, what did Mary actually do? She just said, like what you're doing right now. I'm standing here preaching my heart out, and you are just sitting. <laughs> you are at rest. You are at rest. And that's where the Christian life begins, sitting down. In the book of Ephesians, long before you can walk worthy of the Lord, what, like a prince, the princess that you are, you gotta learn to sit. The Christian life begins, salvation begins with you resting in what has been done. Which of the two sisters do you reckon made Jesus feel like God? The God that he is. The sister who saw him outwardly in his tired form, in his humanity, needing her service, or the sister whose eyes of faith penetrated through the human guise, through the human veil, and saw the inexhaustible supply that was there, waiting to be poured out. And how glad the Lord was when he found someone he could pour it to. She chose that good part, that one thing needful, which will not be taken away from her. Can I have a good amen? It's hard for us to believe that because it's against the grain of religion. Religion says you gotta serve God and He's gonna bless you. you. Serve God, but no, we serve God because we've been blessed. We bless because we are a blessing. Can I have a good amen? You see, listen, you know, you, you, you give your offerings because you know you are rich. Is it still kosher to say this in America that you are rich in church? All right, are we gonna pander to some hypocrites? They can live in big houses, but you cannot. Let me just tell you this. The Bible says we are rich because you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich for your sakes, he became poor. That you through his poverty might be rich. We are rich because of the cross. Now, in the very next chapter, now that you are rich, act like it so bountifully. Bring your tithes. Your tithes is not something that you have, but something that God has blessed you with, and you take your 10% and you give it to God to show that He is the source. Yeah. 
You don't have to tithe. You don't have to. You get to. Okay? Praise the Lord. So the servant, he remains a servant still because he looks at all, all of us. At any time when Jesus was walking on this earth, he could go back. He could find his freedom. He could leave all of us in our sin under judgment. But he says, Father, I love you. I love my wife, the church. And I love my children. And he went to the cross. And forevermore, there is a glorified man representing us at the Father's right hand. He is one of us. As he is, so are we in this world. Can I have a good amen? In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus actually shared one truth. But because of our familiarity with that passage, the moment I, I quote that passage, you'll start thinking, yeah, I know, I know all about it. Our very familiarity is holding us back from the revelation that God wants us to have. Do you know what Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount? He says, therefore I say to you, take no anxious thought what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. And then he said this, Really, is the Lord just talking about food and drink and clothing? Or do you think he's going for something more? Now watch this, the next line he says, it's not the life more than food and the body more than your clothing. Now what does it mean? On one hand he says, it's not the life more than food and the body more than clothing. Now it'll be redundant to state the obvious. If the Lord just referring to natural life being greater than body, uh, that food, and our body being greater than clothing, it's redundant, isn't it? Everyone there knows that. He must have been referring to quality life and a quality body. How to have a quality life and a quality body. He gives us the secrets right there. And the secret is only one thing to do. Actually, it's only one thing not to do is to let go. Again and again, the Lord says, let go, take no anxious thought about your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink. Which of you, by taking an anxious thought, can add to your lifespan? Worrying cannot make you live longer, but it may shorten your life. Now we have new studies that talk about Stress, chronic stress leading to depression, destructive behaviors, cardiovascular problems, high blood pressure, and all kinds. You know, you know it. And life is becoming more and more stressful. There's a frantic pace to modern living. Have you noticed that? It wasn't too long ago I was wishing Joe, Happy New Year, Mer Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and Christmas is coming again. So it's back up to the attic to take out your decoration. You thought you just put it up there. It felt like only a few months ago. Time is passing really fast. We noticed that. And people are no longer like taking time to be polite, to be, you know, just to be, to live, to live life. It's just that go, 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 go. And it's taking a toll on our bodies. And Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, he actually told us, let go of all anxious thoughts. Oh, it's very easy for you to say that, Pastor Prince. I, I didn't say it, the Lord Jesus did. <laughs> Just let go, let go, let go. I've got real serious problems to attend to. I've got, I've got this to attend to. I've got a boss, a screaming boss that, that is asking me to meet up this deadline. I've got a, a, a wife that doesn't understand what I'm doing. I've got children that are screaming every time I come back. You don't know my problems, Pastor Prince. And I keep on watching the news. The news is always bad. Come to church, it's always good news. Especially this preacher here, right? The smiling preacher always gives you good news. Jesus himself says, in talking about the signs of the times, when people see these things happen, and all these signs, nation against nation, Rumors of wars and wars. Men's hearts will fail them for fear. 
of seeing those things coming to pass. That's literally heart failure. Fear, worry, stress, anxiety. And the only thing he tells us, you want God to clothe you, you want God to give you a quality life, quality body, healthy body, let go. Amen. Let go. Let go and his supply will flow. We have this idea that, we have this idea that uh, uh, when I pray, then God starts supplying. Actually friends, when Jesus died on the cross and he cried the, that beautiful one word in Hebrew, kula, which is finish. All the blessings, the goodness, the, the, the favor of God was released, was unleashed upon a lost, crying, sighing world. Amen. It has never ceased then. Supply has been coming our way. Then pray tell me, if supply is coming my way, Pastor Prince, then how come I don't see it? How come I don't see it manifest in my life? Because we are constricting the supply by our worry. Let go. And your supply will flow. Many years ago, the Lord gave me a vision. Now, I'm very careful about saying a vision because it's been abused so much. But I saw this vision when I was praying. I saw a man standing like under an open heaven and there were golden pipes coming down to him. Later on, I found out that in Zechariah chapter four, exactly Zechariah saw golden pipes coming down from the menorah, all right, feeding the menorah rather. And these golden pipes were soft and pliable like your rubber hose, but they're gold and they'll bring golden oil down to this man. And uh, one golden pipe would bring financial blessing. Another one would bring wisdom, amen. Another one would bring parenting uh, skills. One would bring uh, peace of mind. One would bring healing and health. And, and as, as they came, it was, uh, the golden supply was su being supplied all the time, but in the very area, uh, notice next, the very area that he's worried about, let's say he's worried about his health. I, I saw this happen. He squeezed that golden supply, that pipe. Now, as far as God is concerned, the supply is still flowing. But where he's concerned on his part, that area has been constricted. Let go, Jesus says, let go, and you will see God feed you better than the birds of the air. <laughs> Amen. I remember when I was in elementary school, my friend and I, we were Pretty mischievous, and we saw uh, this gardener in school. He'll be, he, got, he had a long rubber hose, all right, pretty long, and he was way down there. So my friends and I were hiding behind the bush, and at the right time, we'll step on that rubber hose, and the poor man would start looking and wondering what's happening. And then when he looks real close, we let go, you know. <laughs> yeah, I've repented, yes. <laughs> but, you know, the supply is always flowing from God. It's not like when you pray, then God starts supplying. Amen. Ever since Jesus died, Jesus gave God, if you would, a righteous outlet for all his blessings to come upon sinful men. Amen. And the only thing that is holding it back is our worry. You probably have an experience where you had a pain in your side or whatever, and then uh, for, for some particular reason, you didn't worry about it. Two, three days later, you say, hey, wait a minute, a few days ago, I had this pain, and where is it now? It's gone. But there were other times you felt a pain, you start pressing, you start wondering, you start looking up your medical encyclopedia, <laughs> you start looking on the internet, you know, you start looking at all the symptoms, and then the pain became stronger. And for some, <laughs> have you ever had that experience before? Come on, am I the only one? <laughs> and perhaps, you know, God is supplying you. Like, I remember when I was a teenager, I, I never really worried about money. That was because I remember as a, as a college student, um, I only had this much money allowance to go by. And I remember that I was down to my last $10. And I found out that my older brother had a financial need. So unbeknownst to him, what I did was that I took my $10, my last $10, and I put it into his wallet. Now, he never knew about it. But you know what happened? That particular day, somebody would just bring me out for a meal. Things would just happen. And from then on, I, I realized that I never have to worry about money. So money, one area that I don't worry about is money. And it seems like for that area, supply is flowing. Amen. You know, when, when it was presented to me as a pastor because of our growing congregation to get a, a, a bigger place, 
in Singapore, property is very expensive because land is scarce. And now we have built a, a building that costs 400 million US, and it's all fully paid. And I'm telling you, when I look back, to God be all the glory, when I look back and I think to myself, how did we do it? Until now, I have no answer. You know, we have Miracle Seed Sundays where we raise, a special Sunday, we raise money for the building. Out of five years, we only had four Miracle Seed Sundays. And one particular year, you know, my leaders were telling me, Pastor, it's about time for us. And I said, I don't feel the leading this year. I just don't worry about it. And money came in. To God be the glory. Now, you might think there were many $1 million gifts. No, there's only one in all that five years. Only one check of a million dollars. It's the five loaves and two fish. <laughs> so when someone asks me, how do you do it? I don't know. <laughs> I just let go, brother, chill, hey, amen? <laughs> Live the let go life. <laughs> so this book is different from many other books on stress, worry, and anxiety in that many times they tell you what to do. Breathe harder, breathe deeper, push. You know, they, they tell you steps and all. Okay. No, I'm not against all that. In fact, there is a place where the Bible talks about deep breathing, and I mentioned that in my, in my book. But uh, God's way is not to do more, but to look at all the, the knots in your life, find out where the knots are, what you're worried about, and learn to cast your care in that area to the Lord. <laughs> Parenting especially was, was the, the, the point where I squeezed that golden pipe a lot. You know, I thought I was a cool guy, I was a carefree man, you know. And, and until I got married, and then the baby came. Jessica came along. Every little sneeze, every little cough, every little, you know, it's like, I'm asking Wendy, is the room too cold, you know? <laughs> is she coming down with something? Is she okay? I know some of you guys are not worried about that, but for some reason, because of my love for my daughter, you know, you find that the devil knows how to bring worry and care, especially for people that love someone else. It seems hard to let go of worry and anxiety when you love that person, yet, the most responsible thing you can do for that person, I'm coming to the story, let me just tell you what happened. And, and, and we, we are going to the doctor, bring Jessica in and out, in and out, and uh, as a little baby, you know, saw her getting all kinds of shots and all that. And, and it seems like the more I worry about her, the more she had all these conditions. And one day I had to go to God, I need an answer, Lord, speak to me, Lord, what's going on? And the Lord says, you know, son, every time you worry about your daughter, it's like having a big button right over her, her head that the devil can push any time. And when he pushes it, your preaching for that Sunday is affected. When he pushes it, your relationship with Wendy is affected. So you're giving her a button. So what do I do, Lord? Surrender her to me. Amen. And when things happen, just say, I'm not worried about that. It's in the Lord's hands. No, I'm not worried about it. It's in the Lord's hands. The devil will come to you after you cast your cares. Make it business-like. Make it like a business transaction. Mark it down. Today, at 2.35, I knelt down and I gave God, write down, number one, worry, all right? Your daughter's name, your son's name, okay, your finances, whatever it is, write it down and say, Lord, and crush it into a piece of paper, whatever. Lord, here you, you are. I surrender it to you. Remember that time, write it down somewhere, and once you let go, honor him by not taking it back in your thought life. What's gonna happen? The devil will come to you and say, what are you going to do about that? What are you, me? Check it with him. What are you going to do about your daughter? What are you going to do about that the dateline? What are you going to do about that payment? What are you, you, you? The law focuses on you. You shall not, you shall not, you shall not. Grace focuses on God. I will, I will, I will be merciful to their sins and their sins and iniquities will I remember, will I remember no more. It's all about God and His supply. The focus, the devil wants to put a focus on you. The Lord wants your focus on Him. What a word we've received today. Subscribe to the Joseph Prince Ministries YouTube channel for daily updates. And don't forget to share it with someone you know. You never know who might need to be encouraged today.